part two. Now I'm going to show you this machine in a bit more detail. We've seen how it works. Let's show you what it looks like, shall we? Let's pull it into the centre of the room, so we're under the light. And that gives you a better idea of its size too. Right, there we go. Now this thing, as you can see, is pretty damn big. Uh, the thickness of it is fairly wide. There's the front. Um, there's the, let me just tip, tip it on its back there. Not really supposed to do that. That's the back edge of it. That gives you some idea of its thickness from top to bottom. It's pretty damn heavy too. Now, ow, I got my finger, you lump. This thing totally got my hand. Right, let's just turn it around to the side. On the right hand side, you'll see that there is two great big controls here. That's volume. And speed. Behind that, you'll see a slot at the bottom there. This is where the software card fits. Now I've only got the one software card, I've got the version 3.0 of the software for this unit. These software boards do get pretty fragile over time, so there's a slot there for that to fit in. Just there. I'm going to push that in. The back, oops, I think I just broke it. Oh no, I didn't. There it is. That's now seated back in. Turn it round to its back. And you'll see that round the back of the unit is a metal stand which can be up or down. And it's right on my finger, so I have to lift that up a bit. That's it, that's it down. Tap to focus. But if I do this, we can get it to go up like that. Uh, now, the back corner, this back piece here, there's a sticky out lump. That's just a fan vent. If you flick it round this way, on the other side, there's not really much. There's a connection there for a, a document feeder, like a serial port type deal. There's a fused power lead and a plug socket. So there you have it. Uh, the back does contain a serial port. Um, but apart from that, there's not really much else on the back. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this, because this has been fun. Stop it.